Well, hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to walk through the creation of this crazy map, this two and a half D looking thing. And I'm going to make it in ArcGIS Pro using open source elevation data. And then I'm going to dress it up just a little bit in Adobe Illustrator. Now there are a set of terrain tools made available for ArcGIS Pro compiled by my friend Ken Field. Now here we are in the catalog view of ArcGIS Pro and I'm gonna dig into the toolboxes section. Uh, and you can see I've added Ken's terrain mapping toolbox here. You do that just by right clicking and navigating to wherever you saved it. If I dig into this, I'll see that there is one called plan oblique now plan oblique is like two and a half d or isometric it's 3d but just tilted in euclidean space it's 3d without foreshortening kind of neat it's like cubert it's cute plan oblique is cubert okay i open plan oblique now this tool was designed by bernie jenny tom patterson and boyan Shaurich. Let's take a look at our input data source. We've got this Rift Valley digital elevation model they've gotten from NASA SRTM. Great, beautiful, fascinating part of the earth. Now if I point this tool at my input and I give it a name and I set the direction angle to, in this case, 25, um, an inclination angle of 90 means you're looking straight down an inclination angle of zero means you're sitting at the horizon, seeing kind of infinitely tall mountains. And 45 would be kind of halfway up in the horizon. So I'm gonna do 25, which is a little bit low, so we'll get some nice exaggeration of these vertical areas. It's gonna take these higher elevation areas and smear them up so that it looks kind of like a forced 3D perspective. And the result looks like this off on off on see how the higher elevation pixels have been bumped up nudged north you see this cone boosting off of its original location you see this valley staying low but the mountains around it pushing up i'll give you another look pretty cool plan oblique now once we've got a plan oblique elevation model we can do all kinds of cool stuff with it, hill shading and coloring and blend modes. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Instead of just a regular black and white plan oblique, I've given it this elevation themed color scheme. It's called elevation number eight, number eight, number eight. And it's pretty standard, you know, greens to tans, that kind of thing, a little boring. And I want to warm it up a little bit. It's too cool. I want to add some drama and warm it up. So I just duplicated this exact same layer and gave it a different color scheme. And this happens to be one of the really cool Viridis color schemes. Really nice. And it looks like this. Wow, that's gorgeous. But I want to bake these hues into the hues of the more typical elevation scheme. How do I do something like that? Well, with this layer selected, I'm gonna apply a blend mode. Now I'll go to the appearance tab and instead of normal, which is like no blend mode, I'm gonna choose soft light. Soft light kind of combines the tones and colors of these layers and you get something really kind of pleasant. I then created in the raster functions tool set, which you access via the imagery tab, click on raster functions, opens these menu of amazing raster functions. Uh, and I'm gonna choose hill shade. Man, hill shade is such a great raster function. And I point it at my uh, oblique digital elevation model. I'll just do traditional, leave everything default, hit go. And the result is this guy. So a traditional hill shade, tones of black for shaded areas, gray means, you know, in, in between, and then white for very bright areas, direct sunlight in this modeled hill shade. And in order to bake these tones into the hues and colors down here, I just make an overlay blend mode. Instead of normal, I'll choose overlay. 
now instead of covering it up fully, it's just cooking the darkness and lightness into the underlying colors. We're stacking up layers, we're applying blend modes through experiment experimentation, and frankly, we're having a great time. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. This is kind of a nice section. Okay, now one hill shade is pretty cool, but why not do two hill shades? So I did a second hill shade, and instead of a traditional hill shade, this time I did a multi-directional hill shade. Now that um, approximates a bunch of different light sources in different directions of varying strength, a little bit more like what happens in the real world. And the result is this. Slightly smoother, more buttery, creamy texture. Buttery, creamy textures and maps? Yeah, absolutely. And then once again, I'm gonna use a blend mode, but this time I only wanna keep the darks. I only wanna keep the shadows. And one of the blend modes that lets you do that in the darkening mode group is called multiply. Multiply will deepen and darken everything based on the darkness of this layer. Now I've multiplied this multi-directional hill shade. And then, you know what? Because two wasn't enough, I'm gonna do a third hill shade. Again, this one is going to be just a traditional one, but instead of the default altitude, I'm gonna set that really low to 25, so it's kind of sitting close to the horizon. And when I run it, it looks like this. A little bit deeper, darker shadows, a little bit more dramatic, and I want to bake this, of course, into all the underlying layers too. So this time I'm gonna choose a soft light blend mode. Soft light. There. And soft light uses the lights and the darks. And so I've brightened up some of the more extreme sun bathed illuminated areas. It adds a little bit of a richness and texture that looks kind of cool. We're just stacking up a bunch of hill, sh hill shades so far. I've taken this original oblique elevation model and I made a copy of it and I dragged it all the way to the top of these layers. And this isn't a hill shade or anything. This is just that elevation model. I've made it black to kind of a tan color because I want to darken these areas in the valley and boost the lightness of the areas at higher elevation. Just a general elevation-based um, darkening and lightening of my terrain, just because that's how it works in the real world. You know, valleys have less direct sunlight. The sunlight that they do get is incidental, and the higher areas are bathed in direct sunlight. So I want to try to replicate that. I'm thinking about how the real world works when I'm doing this. So for my layer blend mode, I'll choose soft light. There, now the lower areas are darker, the high, higher areas have this kind of lightness boost. And once again, I'll duplicate that original, just the elevation model, and I'll drag it all the way to the top. And this time I'm gonna do something kind of interesting. My color scheme is gonna be semi-transparent white at the lowest elevation models, or at the lowest elevation areas, and that'll taper away to um, a fully transparent kind of pale yellow color at the highest elevation areas. You can see it's 90% transparent at the peaks of the mountains and it's 10% transparent and white at the bottom. So you, the result is a sort of mist effect. And I won't do any blend modes to this. I just wanna cover up content in the lower areas. And the result is, what is a little surprising. Like what has Nelson done? He's losing it, it's crazy. But as I pan and zoom, you can see I'm kind of pushing in this lighter band of fake mist in these areas. And it helps accentuate the fact that these are little pockets of low elevation. And areas of higher elevation are bursting out of that mist area. And it gives a better sense of dim dimensionality. But of course we can improve this. Let's keep going. Why stop here? 
I'm going to, with the raster function tools, I'll show you once again how to get to the raster functions. Imagery, raster functions. And you get this amazing set of options. This time, I'm going to choose slope. What slope does is instead of you know modeling a hill shade, what slope does is just color codes what it interprets as areas of steepness versus areas of flatness and everything in between. And it looks like this. So I've color coded it to be areas that are very flat or dark blue and that transitions to areas that are very steep and abrupt go to bright yellow. And you get this kind of um, crisp edge. My friend Sean Fleming does this to really add some, he calls it crispiness to his hill shades, his terrain maps, crispiness. Add a slope in there and see what happens. Um, now we're gonna use the soft light blend mode on this cool color scheme of a slope layer. So I'll select this in the appearance tab. I'll choose soft light. What that does is paints in those crisp edges and darkens the shaded areas a little bit. I'll give you a before after. Before, after, before, after, isn't it? better it's just you know one step is better than the next you keep it and move on okay lastly i'm going to do an abomination and i'm going to via the raster functions run a hill shade not on the elevation data but on the slope a hill shade on a slope now this tool was not intended to be used that way but that's fine let's just think about what happens when you run a hill shade on a slope? Well, let's just see what we get. Really what it is, is a vertical edge detection. Anywhere where there's steepness, it visibly boosts it by having shade on one side and brightness on the other. Here's the color scheme settings. I've inverted it. Originally, it would look like this. I just invert it. We have a vertical edge detection. Then, in order to bake those tones into everything underneath it, I'll apply the overlay blend mode, which looks like that. And at this point, we are complete in our GIS. So let me give you a quick tour by panning. Look at the sense of depth that we get here. I mean, this is all one data source, one digital elevation model. And we've just given it a bunch of different hill shades and tricks and color schemes and blend modes to give it a sense of real 3D. Plus, the plan oblique doesn't hurt either. It's pretty great. Check this out. I'll zoom right in. Okay, once we've got it all where we want it, I'm gonna to go to the Share tab and just export this map. Now I'm gonna export it as an AIX file. AIX is for the Maps for Adobe extension. It's a free extension. If you use Illustrator to dress up your maps, Ever, or Photoshop, it's a really nice way of exporting your content and all the layers and the layer names are maintained and it's not like these endless nests of clipping masks or anything. It's nice and tidy and clean. And um, I implore you to give it a shot. Before we jump over into Illustrator, I just wanna, I wanna confess something. It seemed like as I'm building up this demo that I had all of it planned out in my head and I just skillfully implemented it uh, like it was rote. But really what this is, is the result of a lot of time spent trying something, trying every blend mode available to me, and if it looked better, I kept it. You know, it's experimentation. Um, I would drag a layer above another layer or below another layer to see if that looked better, and if it did, I would keep it there. And what you're seeing is the result of all that trial and error and guesswork. I'm just showing you the result of a lot of casting about trying a bunch of different things. It's a creative process. Well, here we are in Illustrator. Oh no, 
what happened. The handoff between Pro and the AIX export for Illustrator didn't include my blend modes. That's okay. The team is working on it in a future release. That's all going to be remembered and handled and it'll be totally seamless. But for now, I'm just gonna reapply them. That's why I named these layers with their blend modes. Sneaky. There we go. Nice and easy. Then I boosted the contrast, which I tell you, almost always makes things better. I like to boost it by 12%. Then I added a grain texture to everything to make it look kind of vintage postery, like it's really printed. I gave it a slightly yellowed paper background. I added some credits there. And this was the advice of Warren Davison when I was showing it to Warren, he said, hey, why don't you like make a little geologic cross section kind of thing there. So I just added, I just drew a simple rectangle there to give it a geologic cross section look like it's actually a 3D chunk thing. Drew some semi-transparent black polygons and blurred them to make them look like shadows. And then I labeled it the Great Rift Valley using Sarah Bell's new font, High Alpine, glorious new font. And then I duplicated the font, made it black, gave it a blur effect and then kind of warped it at the end so it looked like the shadow was being cast a greater distance at the lower elevations. Kind of a neat little trick. Have at it, have fun. Thanks for watching.